Hi everyone, Thalassophobia here. Today I want to talk about why calories don't count by Gilles Xiao. Two things. First, no, the title doesn't mean you can eat whatever you want as much as you want all the time. And second, don't put too much value into your look. That stock is naturally going downhill no matter what. I also know that uh, counting calories can become a bad habit for those in the worst spectrum of body dysmorphia like anorexia or bulimia, but the book uh, thankfully also covers that. If you're someone who's been trying to live healthier for more than a decade, so you went from looking like this to this, mostly you already know that weight loss studies have historically been misleading a lot of the time. Coca-Cola funded a lot of studies that say that we can outrun what we ate. The seven country study that wrongly blames fat for the sole reason for obesity. And there's the people who also use steroids, either because they're trying to sell their workout menu or because they don't explain cheat day correctly. What the book is trying to tackle is calories, what it is, how we process them, how everyone have different calorie daily need, and how different calories can be depending on the source. The book explains the history of calorie, how the concept was made, and how we get to count them eventually. The concept for in general still holds, but calorie counting was made using a very controlled heat source, and our body doesn't always provide the same energy to burn the same amount of calories depending on how the calories itself are made. We burn them differently in our body even in our highest energy consumption. Caloric availability is the amount of calories that can actually be extracted during the process of digestion and metabolism, as opposed to the total number of calories that are locked up in the food. In trying to explain that not all calories are the same calories, the book will eventually go also into the macro and micronutrients contained in foods, because uh, calories are not all built the same. Well, yes, the book can be dumbed down to eat healthier, but with the amount of misinformation that is so dumb you think people will not believe it. But we've seen information like drinking pee can be healthier, eating raw, raw liver can be healthier, eating a little bit separated into lots of time in a day can be healthier, and etc. These are information that shouldn't be believed but are believed by a lot of people. I'm glad that books that have a lot of detail and research like this are there for people to read if they choose to. Even if you're not interested in the detail, it does highlight a lot of important stuff, uh, debunk a lot of myth, and it also goes into the importance of having protein and fiber in your daily food. And if you're interested in the detail, he patiently explains why it is important. There are a lot of historical and scientific detail in the book, but Dr. Yao has managed to tell them in an entertaining way with a lot of well-placed self-deprecating jokes and maybe a few too many dead jokes. And in a topic where it is easy to be condescending, he managed to deliver the information in both sympathetic and scientific way. I highly recommend this book. It should have most of the information you need if you are at the point in your life where you want to eat healthier. That's about it.